the purpose of the foundation because, um, you know, we, as I told you, we're going to worry a lot about the sun because the sun's going to start doing sunstorms. Mostly, we're going to start next year. But I have um, a message to say, you that I'm part of this foundation of studying the sun and light, that uh, we shouldn't worry too much because not so much is going to happen in 2012. Only the sun is going to start doing sunstorms in crescendo. It's not, it's not going to, uh, scientists can't say that we, the sun is conscious and that we are interacting with the sun. So they, 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 they talk, it's really terrible, the news they can tell us. So that's why I am saying that it's going to just help us to free ourselves because we have everything ready. Uh, we're just waiting for the sun to tell us to, to move because we have all kinds of technology, all kinds of things ready, and uh, if the city has no electricity, because that's what is going to happen. Uh, you know, satellites are going to come and go. But the good news is that the sun is going to make love to the earth. And when it makes love, it's going to have plasma colors, which we are going to see as northern lights will be able to see all the way down here. So <coughs> it's a... Uh, a message that I'm bringing to you that the sun is not our enemy. The sun is our ally. It's going to help us to bring a lot of things that are there out. And that uh, when a hospital has no electricity, you see mostly you Americans will bring batteries of cars and we'll have all technology that is ready to really put electricity back in the hospital. And then what are they going to say? That that technology is not valid. So we're just waiting for the signal to put all of these new knowledges that we have in place. This is the, the night uh, uh, northern lights that we'll see all the way down to the equator, which I say it's quite some coral because it's the feathered serpent, rainbow feathered serpent. So the foundation has been created to understand the changes in human behavior, the changes in human health that is going to happen in these next years. And all of us are uh, going to experience it, and all of us are ready to study things, mostly the people that are working with light. So, and what is going to th this do in the, in the uh, humans, uh, in health? You know, what we know from other times, 1859, there was big solar storms that actually cut electricity but there was no electricity, they just had telegraph, and uh, there's hardly any electricity. Now we depend upon electricity a lot, so it won't happen in big. It will be short, short, short crescendo, and there will be no more 11 cycles. If you understand this, how the sun magnetic field goes, is that the, the center, the equator goes one way, and the two sides go in the opposite direction, so it's like a spring that every 11 years sort of jumps. But um, this is what the scientists are going to be very confused. There's no more 11 years. There's going to be slowly crescendo uh, different um, solar storms, and the sun is conscious, and he will know where to hit. So I, for me, this is a good news. I hope it's good news for you, too. And uh, we will see a lot of colorful skies. This is are the northern lights that we will see all the way down in these latitudes. And uh, of course, this is a, a, a wonderful signal. Maybe what we see, the people get so amazed to seeing these colors that they are calm, even if they are <laughs> getting in some worry for some situation. So the only worst thing is when it hits the electricity. And what I can tell you is that there are already so many satellites trying to predict where the solar storms will come that uh, they are trying to predict because in eight, mu in eight minutes we know the light and the, and the heat so intense that something happened. Then if the electricity goes, maybe they turned it off to save it or maybe not. But uh, this will happen slowly, okay? Satellite system, internet and things like that might go, but they have to have replacements so maybe they come back pretty fast and that will be worldwide but if not little, little spots of the earth, and we are re reorganizing around, and that's going to help us because we are an adolescent humanity that needs to change the way we've gone about technology. 
And uh, <clears throat> what I know too is that this intense acceleration that's happening to electrons, and it's happening that the magnetic field is, 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 is coming, uh, slowing down, and the acceleration that we feel is because the human resonance of the Earth is, was 7.8 many years ago, now it's close to 13. So that's the acceleration we feel in our lives, in our cells. Well, this what's gonna happen is that, uh, what I can tell you is gonna open the thymus gland. And the thymus gland is depending upon the hyoid bone. That's what another of the messages I have to say. The hyoid bone, bone is uh, a bone that I'll show you now, but in the babies it's in the nasal, it's all the way up in the nasal cavity, and that's why they have a round nose, because, they, because of that they have to learn to breathe and suck at the same time. And <coughs> when the moment that they are, the hyoid bone here is in the center, The neck is a very complicated. I am a cranial therapist and that's why, and a specialist on voice, that's why I can give this message. Uh, the, the, the neck is an amazing structure. So the, what happens is that uh, they say 30,000 years ago, we started to speak. I guess we have to trust that, even though there's many contradicting um, things they say. Uh, about our, where we come from, but uh, <coughs> I guess that they can say with with our skeletons. They say the Neanderthals were able to talk, and that's because the hyoid bone comes down and sits in s on top of the larynx, and that's why we have this amazing amount of uh, incredible sounds that we can do. We don't groan like the like the animals, you know, or like the babies. So that when the baby starts talking is because the hyoid bone has come down to this position, 19 degrees in the, in, the, in the neck on top of the larynx, and gives this possibility of a lot of sounds. And uh, actually the hyoid bone is like a, a, a swing in muscles, and it doesn't connect to any uh, other bone, okay? So this has to swing the same as the sphenoid bone has to actually move, and the, the, the sphenoid bone moves like a butterfly. It's very important because right there where the saddle is, is where our soul is between the, the pituitary, the pineal, and the hypothalamus. So they, a lot of people said this, the soul is there, but there is some, some evidence or some, some more people that are saying it. So the sphenoid bone has to be loose, the, the temporals, this is for cranial sacral therapy, the temporals have to move constantly, and we do the same as the animals. When we get uh, something, oh, they lost them our back, we do just like this, like an animal, and we are like, then we, we tense all, our, all the gestures of our face, and we need flexibility to relieve this. Well, this, the higher bone is like a, 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 a swing, that's swinging there, and because the, 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 the muscles tense, then we can close our mouth. So the higher bone is responsible, it has tensions with the thymus gland. We just know, we're finding out that we use more the pineal than we thought, because we use it every night to go to sleep. Pineal is like a connecting to other worlds, to other dimensions, is what we use mostly when we sleep. But the thymus gland is known that it gets atrophied. So it gets atrophied when we start talking because it, it, it's the, 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 you we know that the feeling of needing to express ourselves, uh, our feelings, our emotion comes from the center of, of our chest and we need to express ourselves and we want to talk so that we're able to see what we feel out here and then we can rationalize it. We've, we've done this 30,000 years, we've done maximum. We can actually rationalize whatever now with our talk. So the whole thing is the thymus gland is also what g brings us an Im immense immune system that we had as babies and we lost as grown-ups. So if the thymus gland opens up, we will be able to feel other people what they feel. We'll have an immense intuition and an immense immune system. If we put ourselves in the it, if we can feel what the other person feels, wars will stop, okay? So if this is the best, say, um, process that we can go 
as changes, and uh, in this case, this is probably what is ascending. We are sending our senses. We are being able to feel, but for this, we have to release, we have to be able to talk everything. But we haven't talked about something. We know that we've all felt, when we have an emotion that's too strong, how our neck tightens, it hurts. We've all felt this, no? So that's because the hyoid bone goes all the way to the nasal placement as we had with babies, and it hurts, and we can't even talk. So this has created tensions in the thymus. So just talking about everything that has happened to you, 